the title of this video should have been called, The Leaders of Today's Feminist Movement Only Care About Money. But that is too long of a title. The women who follow these women care about stuff other than money. In my last video, which is called, How Women Became a Problem, Mr. Kevin Samuels talked about third wave feminism. Third wave feminism happened in the late 1960s. And it is this type of feminism that we are dealing with today. We are dealing with its philosophy, methods, tactics and results. In my opinion, this is why we men are having so many problems with women today. Feminism is not bad, and it has done a lot of good. Good not only for women, but good for men in the world. However, third wave feminism is nothing but bad. In my opinion, in the late 1960s, feminism was hijacked or taken over by people who only cared about making money. They saw women as a money-making machine. As a commodity. People have dreams and fantasies which can provide you with hope. Because of this, hope is easy to sell, and why reality is not. This is why it is easy to sell a lie, and hard to sell the truth. For example, in another one of my videos, I featured the YouTube channel of Rebecca Barrett. Rebecca talked about how she used to be a feminist and why. She also said that many young feminists admire and want to be like a woman named Cindy Gallup. Cindy Gallup is the woman on the right side of the screen with the white hair. This is because they believed women like Cindy Gallup is rich, powerful and successful. Everything they want to be. However, she also said that after years of following today's feminist philosophy and methods, which include never taking accountability, and blaming everything on men. She was never happy. Women like Cindy Gallup might look rich, powerful and successful, but everything they say indicates that they are not. Cindy Gallup said in the interview that banks and venture capitalist firms do not want to give her money for her business. This indicates that her businesses are not successful, and she has no real influence with people who truly have money. Thus, one needs to ask how can she be powerful and successful? Plus, where is her money or income coming from? The only thing I know about Cindy Gallup is what she says in the interviews. But I think she makes her income by making women pay money to hear her lectures and speeches. And at these events, telling these women what they want to hear and not the truth. Back in the late 60s and 70s, there were female magazines that were owned and operated by women. Magazines such as Cosmopolitan and Good Housekeeping, and these magazines were gospel to women worldwide. You had Hollywood movies, television news and talk shows quoting the articles in these magazines as the truth. However, it was nothing but lies. The following video clips are from an interview with a woman that worked for one of these major female magazines. Mrs. Sue Ellen. Thus, women were sold a lie, and are operating their life using these lies as a guide. However, remember that the feminist philosophy, methods and tactics say to never take accountability and blame it all on men. This keeps women from facing reality. From facing the truth. As long as women do not face the truth of the situation, or face reality. Keep women from listening to men. Then, they can keep women as a money-making machine. As a commodity. Mrs. Ellen was a writer and editor for the female magazine called Cosmopolitan or Cosmo for short. She wrote for this magazine from the 1970s to the 1990s. Thus, for more than 20 years. As I already mentioned, this magazine was big and had worldwide influence. The smart women did not fall for the lies in these magazines. But there are a lot of dumb women. I wrote for Cosmo for about 20 years. Why all of this hijacking of the women's movement? Money. Money. Why was Cosmo so successful? Because it attracted advertisers. Why did it attract advertisers? Because it worked. When people, when a young woman, an insecure young woman, reads this in these magazines and thinks that she has to have perfume, cosmetics, hair products, beautiful clothes, singles travel, abortions, uh, contraception. When she thinks she has to have all of these things, she's going to spend a lot of money. What these magazines are doing, and what now the internet and everywhere, turning a woman into a commodity. It's all about me. If you can convince a woman that everything is about her, then she has to buy a whole bunch of stuff to make herself so wonderful. They're telling you, on the one hand, be yourself. On the other hand, they're saying, you're not good enough the way you are. 
buy all this stuff to be, to be beautiful. Why aren't you beautiful just the way you are? Here's the perfume. Oh yeah, you stink too. <laughs> Oh, by the way, your, your, your hands don't look very nice either, and uh, your hair color is wrong. <laughs> oh, and when you're, when you're tired of hearing about that, have some ice cream and a little booze to go with it, because then you'll be too fat, and then we'll have to put you on a diet. <laughs> the advertisers um, liked this content, if you mm -hmm. will. This mm -hmm. content. As you saw when I was talking about the rules, don't don't attack the advertisers. Um, this was a content designed to sell products. Mm -hmm. well, how do you sell beautiful products? How do you sell hair products, cosmetics, singles travel, um, contraceptives, abortion? All these things we're selling. We were selling in Cosmo. You sell it by selling the Cosmo lifestyle. Yeah. So, woman thinks that she has to live this way, then she'll have to say, oh, I just have to have all this other stuff. That's why, I, that's why I talked about this high value thing. It's not that women really want a man making some money, but they want a lifestyle. I run into more women who want to be retired by 45, living on the beach. And I'm just like, There are many dark aspects to that, but one of the darkest aspects to it is you're, you're selling to, uh, to average woman, you're not good enough. You That's need expensive cosmetics, you need fancy clothes, then you'll be good enough. But, but it's an illusion, because you gotta, you got to keep upgrading all the time. Helen Gurley Brown wrote this famous book called Sex and the Single Girl which was a part of the sexual revolution because it was glamorizing the idea that you didn't have to be married to have sex and that you didn't have to be married in order to have a good life. Um, so this, this single woman that Sue's describing was supposed to be the vanguard of the sex-positive new woman, and she was made up. And when I was on staff, I found out that my original thought was true. That those stories in that magazine, especially about all these women having these fantastic sex lives and having all, jumping into bed with all these men all the time, were completely made up. Helen Gurley Brown even had a list of rules on how to make up stories about these women having these fantastic sex lives. And uh, I kept that list of rules for years and years and years. I wrote the magazine for another 20 years after I was on the staff. I wrote for the magazine for another two decades. And I kept that list of rules on how to lie to uh, the American public. The stories about these young women who were having fantastic sex lives uh, were made up. Because if this, remember now, this was in the early 70s, but, it all, we, but we continued to make them up into the 90s. You're also selling divorce. We sold divorce in Cosmo. Um, really? We had, Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. yeah, well, now, and I ran into a woman who actually had bought into the Cosmo lifestyle, had been married, and she said to me, oh, you know, I'm free now. I divorced it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Leave this stuff and changed her whole life and got divorced because she thought this was going to be an exciting life. But yeah. for young women to start living these fantasies, yeah. you know, as you well know from all the victims of the sexual revolution that you have encountered, when they start to live these fantasies, then it wrecks their lives. Avoid attacking advertisers and, where convenient, mention advertised brands rather than the non advertised competitors. So, again, we're selling products here. These stories are about selling products. And that, that, and uh, that, and then there was another, um, um, and where was that? Where she said um, that we, we could make up um, experts to quote if we couldn't find one to say what we wanted. 